And here is the news, Diana. Thank you, Clark. Should you be out saving Lois? All right. Hi, everyone. I'm your host, Michaela Grundle. Um, so before I jump into these articles for this week, uh, I just want to say to subscribe down below, of course. And if you want to see any of our previous Haven Films Minutes videos, check out the cards in the top right hand corner. All right. So today I have three articles. And the first article that I have is called Accenture Repositions Biggest Brand Move in a Decade and Triples Media Spend. All right. So basically this campaign was um, helped, discovered, uh, and launched with the uh, agency Droga5. Uh, so basically the whole campaign is to embrace change during these times. I'm going to read a little bit here. So the new brand campaign, Let There Be Change, will triple the company's annual media spend to $90 million. So they both uh, seismic and small optimistically capture both its power and beauty, reflecting the depth and breadth of Accenture's expertise. So Accenture is a agency, an agency who helps other businesses uh, evolve and develop new technologies um, to grow themselves. Uh, so here is a quote from Julie Sweet, which is the chief executor officer of Accenture. So exponential changes in technology were transforming the way we work and live before COVID-19. And now its impact has raised, raised change to a whole new level, requiring companies to reimagine everything and requiring economies and entire industries to rebuild. So as we all know, so many companies and businesses and even schools have had to change and work through COVID-19 and, and kind of work through these struggles. So for me personally, I'm a student and we've had to go fully online and we've really all had to adapt, both professors and students. Um, so it's really, you know, prompting people to grow and evolve fast. Uh, so I think that Accenture's purpose, uh, which is says here, to deliver the promise of technology and human ingenuity uh, to guide the company's strategies, priorities, and the opportunities it creates for its more than 500,000 people. So, like I said, their goal is, is really, I think, ahead of their time in terms of the need to evolve, especially during times like this. We, we didn't see any of this coming, really. Um, and on top of helping other agencies and businesses thrive, um, they're following the same advice. Um, so this time of relentless change, they, they say that they are acting with great agility and boldness. And I thought that that was really um, great in, in terms of, of a business's overall goal and objective to, to grow and evolve as these times are also growing. Um, so yeah. Uh, I thought that that article was great. Comment down below on your experience with the, these times and having to evolve and grow. Um, so this is how Accenture has grown and how they've clearly made an impact on the industry by helping others grow and evolve. I think that's great because we all do have to work together to grow together, you know. Uh, so now we have um, our second article which is titled Yofi Fest 2020 will be a virtual online film festival. So uh, the Yofi Fest is held in New York City, uh, typically, but like the title says, it's gonna be a virtual film festival this year. So I think that this is awesome because, you know, bouncing off of our previous article, more and more industries and companies and businesses are all having to transform online. So I thought that this was a great opportunity for um, kind of helping other industries understand their need to grow, especially in the film industry, um, to provide these platforms of 3D technology and all of that to help people um, really enjoy the things that they do, such as films. Um, so all the film festival, all the films in the festival will be available as video on demand screenings. So you can watch what you want and when you want. Every film program also includes an invitation to the scheduled live online Q&A talkback with the filmmakers. So you can learn more about the film, hear about behind the, behind the scenes stories, and ask the production team questions. 
One of the silver linings of having this year's festival online is that nearly all of our 140 plus filmmakers are able to join us to talk about their films. This is unprecedented and would be nearly impossible at an all in person festival. So I think this is great. This allows film lovers to get a more interactive experience and they can also interact with the film creators and get to know behind the scenes things that were in the production of the vit films. So I thought that that was awesome. Um, not only that, but you can watch these videos from October 23rd through November 20th. So you have a lot of room to be able to watch these films and you can stay safe at your home while doing so. And that's not to mention that the, this is an international film festival. So yeah, like I said before, um, I'm a student, so I, I sometimes, I'm sure we're all busy, but it's hard for me to make time to do the things that I like. So, you know, I think that this is something that's great for people who are busy and um, can't wouldn't necessarily be able to make it if the film festival were to be in person. So I thought that this was a great opportunity for film lovers to participate in this event. So make sure you sign up. All right, and then our last article today is titled, VR games are slowing the pace of combat, and I'm here for it. This is brought by escapistmagazine.com. Um, so basically, the rundown of this is how VR technology is, you know, making users slow down and become more immersed into these digital realms. So it's a given that video games are an illusion, but in a few ways, it is more obvious than with the actual speed of most games. So... Virtual reality has opened the door for countless new immersive experiences. So this is bringing our entertainment much closer to reality. By slowing the pace, VR has made it more realistic for players to actually feel like they're in the game. So we're all used to, I'm sure we all have some experience with uh, either playing or even watching others play video games. And you know how fast it is and, and with just a controller. Um, people are whizzing through within these worlds. But uh, by the nature of VR technology, uh, it incorporates the human element. So it's um, really you know, making players use their full body. And with that, we obviously can't move as fast as we do with the controllers. So um, you're not necessarily mowing through your enemies instead you typically face between two and five opponents in an apartment or down a hallway a single step can be a meaningful moment in combat yet deliberate yet instinctive instinctive um so this is really you know making players more immersed like i said your natural survival instincts kicked in kick in and those are those tell you to not just charge headfirst into combat without concern for yourself. Suddenly, you find yourself sidestepping, blind firing, fighting back to make every inch count. So actually carrying on with the movements is way different than playing with a controller. Um, your favorite games are, are now basically, it's more like the world that you're in when you're playing through VR technology. Uh, it encourages players to engage more into the world rather than just fly through the actions. Um, so it's, like I said, this is especially important to bear in mind as when VR games do try to emphasize more traditional rapid-fire response time, uh, they not only narrow their potential audience but can misuse otherwise great gameplay. Um, so... No matter what game you're playing, VR technology is prompting players to take a step back and play the games in a more realistic and controlled place. Pace. I'm sorry. Um, what do you think about VR games, and would you, would are you interested in playing them? Comment down below. All right. Those are our three news news articles for this week. I'm your host, Michaela Grundle. Be sure to uh, uh, subscribe down below. And check out our previous Hayden Films minutes in the top right-hand corner. Stay safe.